Well, it's good for us to get into God's Word here today, the third day of January 2021. Shall we pray? Precious and everlasting Father, we bless you, Lord. We thank you for helping us to cross into this new year. We thank you, Lord, for the many things that we have hoped in you and trusted you for. We thank you for the things that you have made uh, a reality in our lives. But above all else, Lord, we thank you for life. And we thank you for good health. And we thank you, Lord, for grace to trust in you, our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we uh, begin this uh, service, first Sunday of uh, 2021, I'd like that we put our attention on uh, some scriptures here in the Word of God, beginning in uh, Romans chapter number 15. We will pick a number of scriptures, but our key verse is verse number 13. And uh, the Apostle Paul had been writing uh, many things. This is a letter to the church in Rome. Here in verse 1 he says, We then uh, that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor, for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. In this chapter, chapter 15, the book of Romans, Paul is making an appeal to the saints of God in Rome to do certain things but to the end that they may have unity in that church. It it begins by uh, telling them that that, that the strong should bear with the weak. The strong should bear with the weak. Many times in the church you will find some strong people, strong in faith, uh, strong uh, physically, strong, uh, and then we have some that are weak in faith. And it is very easy for a church to be split between two groups, the strong ones and the weak ones, where the strong see the weak as a, as a burden to them because they are not strong. Uh, but again, there was a problem also in that church. We had uh, uh, Jews and we had Gentiles. And, and, and sometimes the Jews would look down on, uh, on the Gentiles. And as we continue reading, the apostle telling you know, the Gentiles and the Jews to be one, to be of one mind. So uh, the apostle was uh, was asking in verse 8 and 9, if we can uh, go there quickly, he says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written, for this cause I will confess to, to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again, he saith in another place, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and loud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Praise the name of the Lord our God. There is a call here by the apostle. He wants the strong to bear with the weak, and he wants the Gentiles to feel part part and parcel of the program of God. Elsewhere in the book of Ephesians, he talks about uh, Gentiles who have been brought nigh to the commonwealth of Israel. Gentiles who one time were without hope, now have hope in him. Uh, He talks about uh, uh, this middle wall of partition being removed so that Uh, The church may become one people, one people under God, so that now we can together hope in God, so that together we can serve God, 
so that together we can live for God. Uh, but in verse number 4 that we read earlier, it says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. In other words, what the apostle is saying that all the Bible, all the things that God has dealt with uh, in, in the word of God were to this end, that we might have hope. And then in verse number 13, it says, now the God of hope. The God of hope. This, this is not to be taken to mean that God is hoping or that God has hopes. Of course, God has hopes. But this is not really what the apostle is talking about. He is talking about God, the source of hope. Our hope is in God. And so we call him the God of hope. He's the God that showers us with hope. Now why does God do this? Because oftentimes, and in the world, we will face situations that make us lose hope. But God wants us to have hope. God wants us to be filled with hope. 2020 has been a year when many have lost hope. It has been a time when many have lost their jobs. It has been a time when many have lost confidence even to be among others. But God is telling us today that he is the God of hope. He is a God of hope. He has made us sail through. He will make us go to the very end. We may have reached, as it were, the end of the rope, but we have a God of hope. Praise his wonderful name. He says, now, this is a prayer that the apostle is beginning to pray here. He says, now, this verse is about a prayer. He says, now, the God of hope, fill you. He says, fill you with what? With all joy. Hallelujah. Have you lost joy through 2020? Now God can fill you with joy in 2021. All joy can be yours. Not just happiness, but joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. All peace. There are things that can keep us from enjoying peace. Even peace within ourselves and peace with one another. But there is a God of hope. There is a God of hope that is able to give us peace with one another. To give us peace with Him. Peace within ourselves. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. See, if you are going to be full of joy in this year, if you are going to be full of peace this year, it's because there is a power. And that power comes from God by the Holy Ghost. The apostle again writing in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, I believe verse number 13, he says, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. But you cannot, you cannot have faith without hope. Hope makes us have faith. Hope is so crucial. Scripture tells us that we are saved by hope. Ever read that scripture? We are saved by hope. We'll get to that, God willing. But what is hope? That we might have hope. What is hope? The God of hope. What is hope? Hope is not just wish. I know you know more English. When you say I hope, you just mean I wish. But biblical hope is the belief in what could be. Hope redefines what is probable and opens doors to the impossible. Hope. Hope is a vision for better days, for better things. But hope is not just about the future. Yes, we hope for things in the future. But biblical hope ensures that that which we are hoping for gives us motivation now. It motivates us today 
to work towards what we hope for. Hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. Because God has great and wonderful promises that he has given to his children. And we are the children of God. I say God has given us precious promises. And hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. And the strength of that expectation is God's faithfulness. Now, God has promised. Now, hope is confident expectation of God's promises. Why are we so strong in hope? Why do we have this confidence in God? Because God is faithful. I want to say this. Even in the midst of hopelessness, we can still have hope. Oh, someone, said, uh, someone said there are no hopeless situations. Only people who have lost hope in situations. But you can find yourself in a place where he doesn't look like you're going to get out of that situation. I want to say something. God is a God of hope. And God is helpful to fill you. To fill you with joy. To fill you with uh, peace. In believing. So that you may abound in hope. We'll get back to that scripture. Christian author Lewis Benedictus Schmidis. He said the uh, hope is to our spirits. What oxygen is to our lungs. Hope is to our spirits. What oxygen is to our lungs. If we are going to make it, we must never lose hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. We will make it because we have a God. He's described in Romans 15 and verse number 13 as the God of hope. That's the one that makes us. That's the one that will make us make it. That's the one that Abraham believed. Scripture says in Romans chapter number 4, he says, who, talking about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. Let's look at that. Praise his wonderful name. As it is written, verse number 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God. The God of hope. Who God quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Hope caused those things which be not as though they were. Because we have a God of hope. He raises the dead, doesn't he? He quickeneth the dead. Verse 18. Who, Abraham, against hope believed in hope. Against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now God gave a promise to Abraham and when he gave this promise to Abraham, his wife was 75 years old. Sarah was barren. Her womb was dead. But God gave a promise. He told Abraham, I am going to make you the father of many nations. Abraham said, how shall this thing be? And God took him out and told him, look, look up to the skies. How many stars are there? Can you count them? He probably started one. possible for me to count. He says, so shall your descendants be. Against hope, when he was old himself, and his wife was past the period, he still believed in hope. Have you reached that point? Have you reached the point where you can say there is no hope? There's never a time when there is no hope. As long as God is there, there is hope. Praise his wonderful name. And, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God. 
Hope is confident expectation of what God has promised. Confident expectation. In other words, God is going to do what he promised. Is there anything that by any luck you know God has spoken to you about? Have you ever read scripture and in reading scripture you felt like God was talking to you because he was speaking to you? If there has ever been that, if there is any promise that God has ever given to you, I want to give you assurance that it can happen if you don't lose hope. If you do not stagger at the promise of God. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. That's hope. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter number 8, verse number 24. He says, For because... We are saved by hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we with patience wait for it. We have a God of hope. We have a God that has given us precious promises. And if God has given you precious promises, do not stagger at the promise of God, but wait for it patiently. We say hope redefines redefines hope redefines what is probable when you had felt like it is not possible it is not going to happen it probably is not going to be just when you felt like there was no possibility there was no probability hope redefines that when you have hope it redefines what is probable and opens doors to the impossible. Romans chapter 5. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into his, this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience worketh experience. And experience worketh hope. And hope, verse 5. And hope, once we get to that point of hope. But remember, it's, it's a trip. It's a journey. It begins with tribulations. Is that where you are now? In the place of tribulations, where we were in 2020? When we did not know what was going to happen tomorrow. When we did not know whether we had gone to a supermarket. Where there was somebody with a disease. Tribulation. Troubles. Tribulations. Tribulations work at patience. And patience work at experience. Character. And experience work at hope. But hope, once you get to that place of hope. And that's the place I want us to move into this year. Where we start seeing possibilities. Where we start seeing things happening in our lives. Where we start seeing the promises of God being fulfilled in our lives. Hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So once we have this Hope that God gives to us. Once we have this God of hope that fills us with joy and peace. Once we have this hope, it does not matter what situation we find ourselves in. It does not matter how low we go. Because this hope cannot be quenched by anything. Once we have hope in God, once we have confident expectation that God is going to do what he promised because he's a faithful God. Once we get there, there is nothing in this world that can quench that hope. No one is hopeless that looks to the God of hope. And some of us have been through hell and high water. Some of us had their... Sources of income completely brought to a stagnant hold. 
But we are still here. Hallelujah. We are still here. I say no one is hopeless that looks to God, the God of hope. Now I know hope deferred. Scripture says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But we are the God who is the strength of his anointed. We are the God that makes us go over a troop. We are the God that is able to make us make it. God. Let's get back to Romans 15. I want us to read that in uh, the New Living Translation. Romans 15 and verse number 13. This is the key scripture for us today and indeed for 2021. New Living Translation. I pray that God, I pray that God the, source of hope, the source of hope will fill you completely, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you, trust him. because you trust him. Then you will overflow, then you will overflow with, confident hope with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the, power of the, Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God, I pray that God, God the source of all hope will completely fill you with joy and peace because you trust in him so that you may be filled with hope reminds me a time when uh, joshua was uh, chasing after these midianites uh, zamona and zeb and he came and found some people and his soldiers he and his soldiers were faint they were fainting they were worn out and they met some people and says give us some water give us Give us some water to drink. And they said, no, we're not going to give you any water to drink. Have his Ziba and Zelmona in your hands so that we may give you to drink. You go, chase after them. And after you have caught them, then come, we will give you. Now that is a desperate situation, doesn't it look like? Yeah. You are fainting. You, you, are, you are fainted. You have no strength. You are giving up. But you haven't yet gotten what you are looking for. Scripture tells us in Judges chapter 8 and verse number 4. It says, uh, and they were there faint but still pursuing. Faint but still pursuing. That's what hope does. You may have no reason to have hope. But again as to hope, you believe in hope. You still chase. And yes, they chased after them and went to others and asked for water. They were not able to get water from them. Again, they were told, His Ziba and the Zomona in your hands that we may help you. And he told them something. He said to them, Yes, I am going to pursue. I am going to, to catch Ziba and Zomona. And when I have done them, when I have done that, I will come back to you and I will torment you with thorns. That's exactly what he did. You cannot disappoint a man with hope. You cannot disappoint a person who has the God of hope on his side. God is a source of all hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, that you may overflow in hope. I'm looking forward to an overflowing with hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's going to happen. I want by the grace of God that 2021 be my year of hope. Confident expectation that God will do what he promised. That God may give to us what he promised. Why peace? That he may fill us with peace because we never realize this. But most times, we do not have the peace we need, even within ourselves. You may not, you see, someone said peace is not the absence of war. You may have no one that you are fighting with or anyone fighting you, but you still may be lacking in peace. Inner tension. A great many of us suffer from inner tension, have a split personality. There are wars within our own selves. In our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits. 
And as long as we have inner tension, there is no way we can have this serenity within about us and within us. Serenity is something most people don't know that it exists. Just to be cool and have no turmoil, no conflicting things within yourself. God is able to take care of those inner tensions and give you peace. And again, many times, worry because of external things makes us not have peace. Like the things that started happening outside of us throughout 2020. Things that cause fear. But let me tell you something. As long as we understand the love of God that he shows and that he has shown to us, we can have peace. God makes a pouring of his love into our hearts so abundant that we have peace. Without peace, we have hope. Praise this wonderful name. Amen. May God give you power by his Holy Spirit to abound in hope. May God restore your confidence in the promises of God. And may God give us a year of hope. Hope that maketh not ashamed. Let me read one scripture here in Psalm 28. And we'll bring this to a close. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. That's the God that we have, the God of hope. The Lord is their strength, verse 8, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. See, we are going to be saved. We are going to make it. Not because we are strong, but because we have a God who gives us strength. We have a God that we hope in. Hallelujah. Yes, 2021 will have challenges, but we will sail through those challenges. And we will come out victoriously because God is a saving strength of his anointed. And now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Precious and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we may be faint, but we are still pursuing because you are the strength of us. You are our strength. You make us go over a troop. Help us, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with joy. Fill us, Lord, with, with peace in believing. Change our situations, Lord. We want to trust in you, King of the universe. Help us, Lord. Help us to say no to unbelief. Help us to say no to giving up. Help us to say yes to hope. Because you are our God, the God of hope. We bless you, Lord. Help us as we get to this year, Lord, that we may never forget that you are our strength. Help us to abound in hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.